All right, FAQ number 49. Do Christians speak in tongues today? Absolutely. Yes, beyond a shadow of any doubt. You say, really? You, you really believe that? Oh, sure. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm speaking in tongues right now. What? What, what are you talking about? Turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Go on down through there and the languages are listed. What are tongues? They are languages. Okay, that's all that this whole thing of tongues is in your King James Bible. And it was a real miracle to have people. I mean, it'd be like all of a sudden the Lord just allows me to speak in perfect Hebrew. Some Jews over in Israel watching the video and all of a sudden I just start, you know, speaking in perfect Hebrew with no accent. You know, uh, would that be a sign gift from the Holy Spirit? Well, sure, it would. And by the way, if you go through the book of Acts, uh, there are no unknown tongues in the book of Acts. And every time people are speaking in tongues, there are Jews present. Uh, why? Because it's a sign gift. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 talks about that. Okay. Say, so what about unknown tongues? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. And you can go through the whole chapter 2 and read this thing. But it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. And it goes under this thing about uh, unknown tongues. And uh, verse 27, jump down there. It says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or three, or let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret... But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay, what's going on here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is you have people speaking in unknown tongues. Who's it unknown to? The congregation. And I've seen this thing many times. There are people that speak foreign languages that are, that are of a foreign country. They can understand English, but they themselves, they can't speak it. I've known people that are like that. So they can understand what's being said, but they just, they can't form the words right or they're too nervous to speak in English or whatever. And they'll speak by interpreters, even though they can understand your English, but they just, for some reason, they can't speak it themselves. So if you have some congregation, some group of believers, and some guy comes in who has that unique situation where he can understand what's being said, but he himself can't speak that language, he can understand English, but he can't speak it then if there's nobody there to interpret his Spanish tongue or his German tongue or J Japanese or whatever, then he should keep silent. That's what's going on there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Tongues are not some kind of made-up language like the Charismatics do where you say, I want to buy a Honda or, or uh, you know, whatever, little funny things like that, hostile shantai, untai, bow tie or something like this. That stuff is satanic. All right, these people that come out with this stuff and they're they're just just running their mouth like that and then saying it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is satanic. If you mean that as tongues, uh, no, those aren't tongues. Um, I do believe that Christians, um, I do believe that Christians can, there are some that can really learn other languages, other tongues, because the word is used interchangeably in your King James Bible. Tongues are languages. And I do believe that certain Christians have gift of learning other tongues. Right? But again, this, this Holy Spirit sign gift, it was there to confirm the word to the Jews as a nation when they said no nationally. They rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah in the book of Acts. You see the transition going from the Jews to now the Gentiles, you know, with some Jews as well. But it's, it's the nation of Israel now to all the worlds getting the gospel and that sign gift of being there, you know, and, um, you know, a Jew being present and things like this. Uh, you know, could that happen today? Could you, could you have a saved Christian that's in Israel and all of a sudden the Lord just helps them to speak in perfect Hebrew? Well, 
it, I, I guess technically it could, but uh, I don't see any proof of that. And the fact of the matter is, uh, right now, a Jew that's in Israel, um, they have to come to Jesus Christ as a sinner, just like anybody else, any other Gentile. Um, and so if you can show me proof that a Gentile Christian went to Israel and spoke perfect Hebrew without any kind of an accent, and um, then I'd say that I'd believe in the Book of Acts type of speaking in tongues. Um, but... Uh, other than that, sorry, I don't believe in this modern charismatic thing of speaking in tongues. It's a made-up, uh, forged language. Uh, it's very, very wicked, very satanic to come out and just allow your mouth to speak. And there are many cases where uh, devils are actually speaking through these charismatics. And uh, you don't have to go to a charismatic church very long to see that those places are infested with devils. Uh, immodestly apparelled women and, and just all kinds of stuff. So... Do Christians speak in tongues today? Uh, well, we all speak in tongues. We all speak languages of some kind. Um, uh, is there the miraculous sign gift? I haven't seen any proof of that. Uh, if you're going to try to do that, then go over to Israel uh, because it's for the Jews, the sign gift for the Jews. Um, but this modern charismatic thing is not speaking in tongues. It is blaspheming the Holy Ghost.